Welcome back to the devlog. A long time ago, we set up this simple animation script to use to, um, to just let the animation students uh, see their work in a game context. But uh, Scott has asked me to extend it to allow us to get the characters running around in a scene. So let's open up our test scene. Here we are. Um, this, is, this is a test scene that Scott has procured for us to use as an example. We want to set this up. There you go. There's our test scene. So what we're going to do is drop that same character into the scene and set it up with a, a more complete character controller. Okay, first step. I'm just going to grab the basic idle animation. I'll use the idle animation as a reference and I'm going to drop, drop that into my scene. Um, I want that at the top though. And we want to put it in front of the camera. So let's put it here. Is that right? Let's do this. So I can see them both. Get a starting point for our character. Like that. Okay. Seems all right. Let's save this as a scene. Save as scenes uh, sample scene sure yeah okay all right so there's our character just sitting there and <laughs> we boot up nothing's gonna happen because we don't have anything attached to this uh, this character next up let's put in the character controller and the easiest thing to do is just use the character controller unity provides a character controller um, and, and sometimes beginners read about the character controller and they read that it's no one uses it it's no good uh, you have to write your own character controller that's not true uh, particularly if you're a beginner i strongly advise you start with the given character controller if you think you can do better then when you're at that point then you go ahead and you write your own right but when we're starting um, I think it's a good idea to just start with the basics and that's what I'm going to do in this video. So um, there's your character controller. It comes with a capsule. You need to move the capsule up uh, until it's not intersecting the ground. The character controller is going to provide us with collisions to keep us from falling through the ground. It's going to provide gravity, but it's not going to provide for us the animation controls and it's not going to provide the motion controls either on its own. We will need a script for that. And I have grabbed uh, a script that I use from uh, my mobile games class uh, just called character. The character class will find the character controller if there is one. And then it will read the keyboard WASD. And based on what we find in the keyboard, it will then apply that to the character controller. Let's see, here we are. It will apply our input commands directly to the character controller, and that's what's going to make this thing go. Um, one other change I want to make. This character controller is designed so that the facing angle is always the same as the camera's facing direction. And we want to change that. We don't want that. Uh, so I'm going to say default the facing angle to the character's current facing, uh, which I believe is local Euler dot Y. That will be the current facing angle. And then right here, um, OK, uh, set the move the facing direction input facing input to the direction of the input I don't know what I want to do here is I want to set the um, okay let's back up a little bit I have here the character input set up as a class here's the movement command in world space here is a single angle for the the Y rotation, the facing angle that I am commanding the character to go to. And by having these separate, I can create different sorts of character controllers very easily. I can either make it 
face the way it's moving, which is what I'm about to do, or I can make it try to face the way the camera is facing, which is the way it used to be, or it could be completely independent movement and facing, um, uh, like, you know, Robotron or something. So what I want to do is change it so that it faces the direction of the move. And so m input dot m facing angle equals mathf dot red red to dig because I want it in degrees mathf dot atan two of m input dot move dot z m input move dot x. I think that's right. Uh, I always get these confused about which is which is which and whether it's positive that way or positive that way. Uh, let's just try it out and see how well I did. Okay. Come on, you. There we go. That doesn't seem right. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it looks like I'm off by 90 degrees. Okay, I probably flipped it. Probably flipped it. It's a habit. X, Z. I could draw diagrams and work out exactly how that's supposed to work. And I will if it doesn't work on the second try. There we go. Oh, wait. Why is it returning back to zero? It should not be returning back to zero. Oh, I know. I don't want it to return back to zero when my fingers are off the controls, but if you ask for a tan two of zero comma zero, you get zero. So I'm going to put in here if m input dot m move dot square magnitude is greater than zero point zero zero one f. Okay, then that means you've got some input. If you've got some input then we'll uh, we'll change the facing angle. Otherwise, we'll leave the facing angle the way it is. Um, okay, Let's make sure that fixed us up. And now we have a basic character controller. Let's make this window bigger. We have a basic character controller that can drive us around. We can face different angles. And you can see that it's cruising over the rocks, <laughs> cruising over the rocks and stuff. Um, and this is a good opportunity to fine tune the collider of the character controller. I have it at a, a height of 2. Let's make it 1.9. Let's see what that's like. Yeah, the, the one foot looks well planted, the other foot a little low. Let's go, if we go lower. Feet seem a little sunk in now, so let's go 1.85. What does that look like? That's not terrible. Okay, so I'm going to want to save that 1.85. Okay, I've got my character controller. Let's make a prefab out of this before we forget. Create an original prefab, um, and it shouldn't be named idle. Let's name it assassin, and that's assassin. All right, now the whole point of this is to get some animation going. So let's get some animation going. Let's take a look again at the script, at what exactly we're doing and how we're accomplishing what we are accomplishing. I am reading the keyboard, the WASD keys directly using the old input system. And then I turn that from camera space into world space using this little trick where the, the movement X vector came from the A and the D key. And that's how much I want to move to the right. Or if it's negative, that means I want to move to the left. And what does right and left mean? It means in this third person type of game, right means to the right of the way the, the human player is facing, not the way the avatar is facing, and not necessarily the right in the way the editor was set up. So what way is the human player facing? That's the same as the camera's direction. So this is the camera's right. 
So I get the camera's right direction, and I normalize it, and that is how much the D and A keys are commanding the character to move in those directions. And then the forward direction is just the way the camera is facing, and so that, of course, will be the W and S keys, how much forward we want. I add those together, and that is the commanded movement that I want on a scale of minus one to one. Okay, and then so this one I use my my old friend ATAN2 to calculate the angle based on the movement. So based on how much sideways movement and how much uh, forward movement, I can create an angle. So if it's all forward and no side, then that is um, that is zero degrees. If it's all to the right and no forward, then that's 90 degrees. All backwards is 180 degrees and so on. Okay, um, I am then applying to the character controller the movement command and I'm scaling it by this parameter walk speed which will allow me to tune the character's walk speed. Uh, okay, um, and then here's my angle turning. Uh, this is the character's current angle and this is the commanded angle and then based on the character's allowed turn speed, I will allow the character, or I will turn the character's angle just directly on the transform. Okay, the last part is some animation work. I did also grab the animator if there is one, and if there is an animation uh, controller on here. Um, based on the movement, I've set up some stuff. What I've set up here is I've set up this attack trigger and I've set up the, um, the movement. Actually, I set it up as a two-dimensional blend controller for my other class, but this character does not have two-dimensional blend controls uh, animations. They only have forward and back. So, and in fact, the animation controller for this thing has already been created. Let's go ahead and use that. And let's take a look at what we've got in there. Okay, it's a, it's a more complicated character controller. Um, we have the idle and the walk, and that transitions on a Boolean is walking, and then the run has a Boolean is running. Okay, that's easy enough for us to hook up. We'll hook that up into right here. I'm going to leave the old stuff so that it's compatible either way. Uh, bool is walking anim move dot uh, that is the character space right that has already been transformed out of the commanded move in world space down into the character space um, and so forward greater than 0.001 f say Ah, I'm gonna laugh. Whatever. Okay, so if the forward speed is basically any positive number, then I'm gonna say walking is true. And m anim dot set bool is running anim move dot z is greater than let's say 0.5. So if you're more than halfway running, you get the running. All right, let's go. Okay, the idle is idling. And we're getting the run, the run cycle. And we're doing a little bit of what I call Scooby-Doo. The feet are not staying locked. The character is sliding quite a bit. So this is a good opportunity to come in here and tune the walk speed. That look better? About four. Yeah, that's good enough. You can tune that, or you can, um, you know, work with your animator to get the correct speed there. We found four was about the right walk speed. I'm going to update the prefab. Uh, okay. Um, and now those animations are good. Um, do I have any attack ability? 
the attack space space key space key will do the attack let's see if that'll work there you go okay cool all right that should work so um now the character is running around in the environment uh, respecting collisions for good or or bad you know I can walk on top of this cactus looks like <laughs> stand on the cactus um, yeah and the the character animations can play um, yeah that, that's a good start so let's call it for that video we have added a character controller and we have created a little custom script to control the character controller uh, based on just the WASD inputs here. In the next video, let's take a little bit of a detour uh, for this project and let's convert our little script to use Unity's new input system. So hopefully I'll see you all over there. I'll jump right into the new input system.